What's going on YouTube? This week on Maxim Outdoors, we're heading down to Greene County to check out Chess Cemetery in Ryerson Station State Park. You're not going to want to miss this episode. So if you want to check out the cemetery and come down here to Ryerson Station, um, you're going to park basically right at the Iron Bridge. You can see it over there. Probably see my truck through this tree here. And then walk onto the other side of this creek here. And uh, this is pretty much the only marked sign here. So, uh, yeah. So, hoping the rain holds off. Looks like it will. Um, this will probably be a shorter bit of a video. But, yeah, should be cool. Old, old cemetery video. Can't beat that. So just a few quick facts about um, the state park here. We're in uh, Greene County today. Like I said before, right along the uh, West Virginia border. This park was established in 1967, so it's fairly new. I believe this is the Pine Box Trail, and it's like 2.2 miles. So at the end of the day, uh, probably going to do around 3 miles today. Fairly new state park in terms of things in Pennsylvania. Um, around 1,100 acres. So not big, not small, kind of right in the middle of uh, all the other state parks. Um, and yeah, really, uh, really nice area down here. Very uh, remote. It's one of the more remote state parks that uh, I've been to. And uh, I do want to say, we were talking about oil wells last week. Well, on my drive down here, it's been probably two years, three years since I've been down here, but uh, fracking has really taken over down here since I've been down here last time. I think maybe five or six more fracking wells have popped up just right along the uh i don't want to call it the main road because it's kind of back road but yeah a lot of a lot of fracking going on down here so uh kind of interesting to see you know we were talking about oil booms and whatnot last week and now there's like a fracking boom down in this area so yeah i already told you that the uh pine box trail is i believe it's 2.2 miles um but i didn't tell you how it got its name so Back in the 1800s, whenever uh, this area was full of Indians and local settlers, um, families would actually carry the pine box coffins all the way down this trail here up to the uh, Chess Cemetery to bury their loved ones. So pretty crazy to think how much the world has changed since that time. This has to be one of the uh, steeper sections of trail I've done in a long time. And uh, just think, back in the 1800s, people were carrying coffins up here. <laughs> I guess it's not that funny, but just pretty crazy to think. This is uh, 
what people had to deal with back in the day. So yeah, pine box trail. Pretty steep so far, but really nice views and, and whatnot. I think we have come to the spur trail of the cemetery, if I remember this right. So we got pine box trail, which will take us back down to the road there. And then, uh, yeah, cemetery pine box trail. So we're like pretty much almost done with this hike. And uh, that's where we're gonna be heading up into uh, the not creepy at all cemetery trail. So yeah, almost done. Real quick, I did want to say how weird it is, as soon as we got on the cemetery trail, how uh, the ecology of this area changed. You know, we were hiking through locust, oak, some maple trees, and now this whole trail is primarily like, I don't know what kind of pines they are, but you can see pine cones all over the place, but kind of, kind of strange, you know? We were literally just on that trail full of locusts and oaks, and now the trail is overtaken by uh, like a pine grove, so kind of weird. And here we are, you can see the old fence, but nonetheless, welcome to the Chess Family Cemetery. So, as I just got here, I just found the first tick on me, which is interesting and weird enough, it was on my hand. But uh, anyway, here's a little uh, history, I guess, of uh, the cemetery here. The last person was buried here nearly uh, 115 years ago pretty uh pretty insane that this hasn't been used in this long um 1907 was the last burial i'm guessing yeah that's that parson grave back there the, the newest looking one so uh a lot of these graves are are young children from the early 1800s and a lot of the graves are pretty much ineligible to this day but uh these are all kind of pioneers to this land back when this was probably all farmland um, a lot of times this is a family cemetery I don't know if I already said that a lot of times family cemeteries if you look on the outskirts of this property or any family cemetery um, you could kind of see some old remnants of old buildings but uh, this doesn't seem to have any another thing I learned over the over the time after coming to a lot of these cemeteries is if you look at these old growth forests, uh, you know, these trees have been here for hundreds of years. And a lot of times these uh, higher trees will actually protect these gravestones over, over time. So something to think about. Got an American so, yeah, flag uh, here. Chess Family Cemetery here has definitely uh, seen better days. 
I kind of glanced around and checked out all the tombstones that I basically could. Um, a lot of them are so weathered nowadays that you can't even read them. Um, another little interesting note is uh, a lot of the child burials here, the child tombstones I noticed were during the winter time. So th that just goes to show, you know, how tough times were here in the winter seasons. Uh, I'm sure times were a lot different back then, but it is sad to see so many, uh, so many child burial plots here. All right, well, that's gonna wrap up Chess Cemetery for the day. Gonna do the last leg of the uh, Pine Box Trail here. Pretty interesting. And uh, just crazy to think about places like this. You wonder how much longer places like this are gonna exist. I mean, some of those graves are totally ineligible now. Um, so yeah, see it while you can basically, because who knows, 20 years from now, a lot of these graves might not even be standing, so. The rain did hold off. I don't know for how much longer, but um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this little tour of uh, Ryerson Station State Park. Definitely gonna try to make it down here again and do some of the longer trails, but I just wanted to make a cemetery video. I thought it would be cool to do for you guys. So uh, I do think I'm gonna stop at some uh, cool sites along the road and do a couple time lapses for you. So uh, yeah, look forward to that. Alrighty, well, the rest of this pine box trail has been completely downhill, which is nice. Um, I can honestly say I probably ate three or four spiders today. Lots of, lots of spider webs on this trail. Uh, ticks, ants, pretty much any bug, fly, insect you could think of was on this trail and probably went into my face at one point or another. There might be a tick in my beard right now. Well, I decided to take the road. Didn't really want to walk up that long hill again. And uh, this road doesn't really seem like it has too much traffic. There's a uh, kingfisher down there making all that noise. There used to be an old lake here, but not no mo. The dam failed whenever a uh, mine I guess it undermined it, maybe. So, yeah, no more, uh, no more lake down here. Made a little friend down here along the creek. Oh, there he goes. As soon as I said that, 
I think it's a couple muskrat that are living in these rocks right here. But I'm gonna set up a time lapse here and uh, back up, and maybe they'll uh, we'll show their faces. But yeah, nice little uh, creek down here. Gonna take uh, a couple minutes and show out. Well, hopefully the time lapses came out pretty interesting, and uh, these little I don't know if they're muskrat or groundhog have just been. <laughs> being pretty playful they keep coming out and staring at me and then there's this do not know maybe it's a beaver or muskrat but downstream there i don't know if you can see it carrying a little brown there goes one right there too i think these are muskrat here and these are groundhog but these ones have longer tails and these ones keep going back and forth with twigs and sticks as you can see <laughs> it's actually kind of funny so yeah thinking these are groundhogs is these are muskrat and they live on different sides of the bridge I guess which is kind of funny just a real quick look here at uh, I believe it was called called Duke Lake the now drained Duke Lake this was all once underwater all the way up to these pipes here if you can believe that I was actually out on a boat in this lake many many years ago and uh, yeah this is all that remains of it so kind of sad to see but also pretty amazing to see how much uh, nature has reclaimed this area in a very very short amount of time just look at the size of some of these trees pretty incredible another really quick stop here at the old dam so uh, kind of got a very brief tour of Ryerson State Park today and uh, yeah this was the old dam that uh, is now torn down due to uh, a mine that I believe was underneath of it. I don't know who thought that was a good idea, but but yeah, anyway, they drained the lake and this is what's left today. You can see where they cut uh, the section of the dam out and uh, this is all that remains. Damn! That was a great episode of Maxim Outdoors. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it down here in uh, Ryerson Station State Park. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave me a comment or two. And yeah, stay tuned for next week. It's going to be a good one, so don't miss it. Fresh oil and chips, anyone? <laughs> <laughs>